Welcome back to another episode of Nav Motorsports. Today I'm going to show you guys how to and why to reinforce your 1.8 differential. So the 1.8 diffs, every 1.8 diff from 94 to 05 came with these notches in it, whether it's open, closed, or a Fuji type diff. These notches are put in from the factory so that if you get rear-ended, the diff breaks and the drive shaft falls out of the way instead of the diff pushing the drive shaft up into the cabin of the car. Great in theory, but when you start to make power or you drive your car aggressively like on track or even on like Tail of Dragon or some windy roads, at stock power, you can snap this just because it's like the weakest point and the torque from your car will just snap this arm clean off. I'll put a picture of a broken diff up here so you can see what I'm talking about. The fix is pretty simple once you have the diff out of the car. There's a lot of companies that sell options for this. The ones that I use are, these are just aluminum plates. You can get them from me out of cage. I'll put a link below. Uh, it's super simple, but all it is is some aluminum that you will weld to this after you fill in these holes and then it strengthens the whole arm so now when you put power through or whatever it's not going to snap the arm. I've seen so many diffs break that if you don't do this you're going to be going through carrier housings like nobody's business. So I always recommend this to anybody that drives their car spiritedly. There are other companies that offer these. There's guys that offer the whole plate that goes across the back. There's people that plate the front. Um, there's a company that offers a bolt through option that is not in my opinion any good because you can crack this right through here you're just weakening, you're adding more flex points and it doesn't actually make the unit one piece. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to weld these on. So you can see kind of this has a hole here for this nub and then which once I clean it up it'll fit on there. And then this weird looking plate sits up top here and you weld all the way around, you weld all the way around and what I do is I put this plate on first, fully weld it out and then I fill in the top and bottom holes and then once that's done you can grind it down so it's smooth you put this on top and I weld the two together here and then and then I run a perimeter weld around this piece and then you end up with this like super rock solid diff arm that will not break under aggressive driving or high power. Step one is to clean there's plenty of ways you can do this you can sit here with a scotch bright pad like this and like scuff forever. You need to get through the oxidization that is on this aluminum because it's bare aluminum. If you try to weld to this now, you're gonna get some really nasty splatter and it's just not gonna hold or it's gonna look bad and like we don't do this for things to look bad. So I am gonna use this thing, which is an absolute lifesaver. It is a Milwaukee like finger sander, something like that. Uh, I've done it before with grinding wheels and things like that to get through there, but you can't really get into these tight pockets. You have to like go in with sandpaper. I'm gonna use this thing, it gets everywhere. Like I can get in these little crevices here, I can get over here, get all the way down here. Uh, highly recommend this. I know Harbor Freight has like air powered ones that are cheaper than Milwaukee if you're not team red, but I'm gonna start by cleaning this up. I'll kind of put you guys on the corner so you can time lapse it and see what it looks like. Uh, safety glasses are a must for this because like you don't want little aluminum shards in your eyes. And then if you have anything in your garage, like I have a couple engine builds going on, cover them up because the aluminum dust will get everywhere and it will end up inside your engines and you'll be in for a bad time. So let's clean this up. We gotta clean. The easiest thing to do if you are unsure, if you're unsure of where to clean, you can take your piece and just like give yourself some space. So like I know I need all this to be clean all the way around here. And then this plate goes all the way to here. And you're gonna clean all that. And then we're gonna clean all the way down here and all the way up in here. And then same along the bottom. And then I like to clean just a little farther than we have to. So there's kind of your perimeter. Just go until it is all gone. You'll get to some bare metal and you'll see it starts to get really shiny and then you're far enough. Uh, 
Bushings are okay. You can reuse these, they won't die from the heat of welding. The axle seals, however, always replace these when you're done because I'm going to put a lot of heat right here and for a $10 axle seal to not replace that is absolutely crazy. So I'm going to pop it out before I start welding just so that I don't like smoke this while I'm welding and inhale all the bad fumes. Um, the diff is drained so I shouldn't lose a whole lot of fluid. There's probably still some in there but pop your axle seals out, both of them. Just replace them both while you're in here. And then don't worry about these. Like you don't have to take them out or anything like that. We're gonna clean this up and get it welded out. Also pro tip, put some rags in. Um, you don't want shavings going in there. Even though it is empty and you can flush it out, this will prevent 99% of stuff from falling inside. So the next step is to clean. Vacuumed it all up. We're gonna take some acetone and get to wiping. Just pretty much everywhere you're gonna weld, Make sure it's all cleaned up. And while you're at it, the plates. And then what I like to do is you take this plate and one of these large clamps from Harbor Freight. Get it lined up where you want it. And then you'll see it's like, this arm is not flat, so there's a gap. I set this kind of in the right spot, clamp it. And then if it's not close enough for you to weld, you can either bend it in a vise or uh, clamp it tighter. That's enough of a gap that I'll fill that, no problem. So we'll go around, we'll weld this first, and then we'll weld the top plate on once we've made it fit. So hopefully you can hear me over the welder. Since my welder is only 110, I can't run 220 amps. I do this at like 130-ish, you might be able to see that on the camera. 130-ish amps. And the trick is to just preheat. So I'll preheat with map gas, and I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up. Let me if I zoom in. You'll see the water leave the, uh... so you can see that dark section right above, like right there. That's water evaporating from your cast. And then preheating will also help with not requiring as many amps on the welder. I'm trying to close that bushing. So you can just kind of watch the water move out. And this also helps burn off any like weird impurities. So without getting too far into it, this is kind of what you're looking for. Not the best welds of mine, but cast aluminum is really nasty. You can see there's some like uh, porosity, or not porosity, but there's some like pull through of interior debris right there. That's what that plaque is. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and weld all the way around. I filled that hole in up there, and then I'm gonna weld all around that little stud, and I'm gonna fill the hole in the bottom. I'll have to flip it all over. And then I'll pick you guys back up when I do this top plate. Uh, and I'll show you the finished product. But not bad if you do your cleanup well enough and you use enough preheat, it welds pretty nice. You just gotta go slow. So I've welded all the way around. This section here is always the worst. You have like a weird torch angle. You've gotta tip this thing really awkwardly. Never comes out good, so don't feel bad if yours don't either. This top piece, <clears throat> I was able to weld that flat enough that this just sits on top and stable. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run I'm going to tack it, probably in a couple places, and then I'm just going to run a bead that blends this plate to this plate to also this plate with that existing weld. So I'll just cross that whole thing and then we'll weld all the way around and then the diff will be reinforced. There you have it, fully welded around. You can see I did a little weave there which 
some people might get mad at. Let's see if I can show it better. This is now reinforced. This is ready to go back in the car. Uh, I'll slam some axle seals in it, but that's how you reinforce your diff. If you don't have a welder or you're looking for somebody to do this for you because you're not comfortable welding cast aluminum or anything like that, I will be putting this service on my site. You can send me your diff housing. Just the carrier, please, not the whole diff. I can reinforce it. I keep plates in stock, and then I will send it back out to you. Uh, it's a pretty quick turnaround. As you saw, it's just some cleanup, weld it, and typically maybe a day or two, and then it'll be back in the mail. I'm happy to do that. Um, if you want dual plates on either side, for whatever reason, I can also do that. But that's a wrap. That's how you reinforce your Miata diff, and that's why you reinforce your Miata diff. So thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.